test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I'm here with Ventus to talk about fully managed network business solutions. Uh, before we get started, I'm on here to do a little bit of housekeeping. We do have you all muted. Uh, that'll help us keep the audio clear. Uh, we are going to ask you to put your questions in the chat box today in your webcast viewer. And once the uh, presentation is over, we will take up your questions during the Q&A at the end of the program. The webinar is set for an hour, as you know, but we will stay until all the questions are answered. Uh, we are recording this, and I will get it uploaded to the FISPA website probably by Friday. Uh, so you can see it there. It is not behind a login. So anybody that's in any of your companies that you'd like to have see it, it's available, even if they don't have a login. If you'd like a copy of the slides from today, there will be contact information on the final slide of the presentation. And with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Bill. Hey, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today for our uh, FISPA webinar on Ventus. We wanted to take uh, probably about a half hour, 40 minutes to go through and introduce you to our services that we offer out to managed service providers, um, financial and security products companies that sell into financial institutions, and bring you up to speed on the different types of network services that we offer from that. A little bit about myself. I'm, my name is Bill Stutzman. I'm the VP of Strategic Initiatives. I am uh, been at Ventus for about five years. And we have been working in the banking space for about 20 years. Um, let's see. The Ventus uh, actually was developed as an organization to support uh, financial services organizations as well as ATMs. Uh, everything that we provide is a managed service and we focus only on the communications part of those managed services, the networking, the internet, and things of that nature. We do not sell ATM um, management services. We don't sell physical ATMs or, or other types of financial products. Uh, we are solely here to help support uh, other companies with providing uh, our services as part of a bundled package for offerings that they bring to market for the financial services industry. Uh, we manage about 180,000 um, units at this point. A uh, mixture of um, ATMs, kiosks, vending machines, um, POS stations, and things of that nature. And um, we have a very high customer retention rate. Uh, we look at uh, ourselves as sort of a boutique organization that is set up to uh, work with our partners and work with our customers to ensure that they meet all the needs. And how we do that is we have a holistic approach to um, building and hosting deploying and maintaining those uh, circuits and networking that our customers need for uh, their customers to bundle in there. Yeah, so in the financial space, uh, an area that we concentrate on um, within there is both, we have the branch solutions, and we have application solutions. So how we look at that is within the branch, um, you may be working with someone that has a network that's required for uh, a branch that just to support the branch, um, they may be looking at changing their uh, phone systems to VoIP. They may have uh, alarm systems and teller stations and things like that, or guest Wi-Fi, another offering. Uh, those are all things that we can look at as part of the branch. And then for applications, uh, we'll focus mostly today on the application side. We'll go through those. Um, first, we'll kind of go for an overview of uh, how Ventus provides the service. And then uh, we'll be joined by John Campbell. Uh, who will go through the individual solutions for the applications and kind of just give you a few examples on how those work. So the gist of managed network as a service is that instead of just selling you a, an internet connection or selling you a router or providing a, um, a system that allows you to, to um, produce your own router, what Ventus provides is a fully managed service. So um, we have these seven pillars of managed network as a service, and we use those to kind of build off the different pieces that our, our customers need. And so some customers use all seven, some only use parts of these. And so we work with them and, and can kind of customize the offering that our partners bring out to their end users as part of the bundled package that's delivering. And so 
the core of those is that uh, we are primarily an engineering organization. So 70% uh, of the employees at Ventus are engineers. They focus strictly on um, maintaining and building the uh, designs and equipment and the networks that go into supporting our customers. Because for us, if it starts with the, the engineering and the network designs and elements that keep that stuff up, that's the first step in ensuring that connectivity uh, for that. And then we also work with uh, 200 plus um, different carriers and um, service providers throughout the U.S. And we can provide anything from field services to hardware. Um, and we'll go through the hardware in more detail later. We do have a 24-7 tech support uh, office. And then we also provide monitoring service from both our side as well as monitoring uh, from our customers if they have access to our web portal. And then, of course, security is always a high priority when you're selling into financial institutions. And it's one of the things that we concentrate on a lot. So sort of the, the key things that kind of drive that is that from that connectivity point, you know, the one element to think about is to ensure that we just don't provide cellular connectivity. It is a, sort of a primary focus in that ATM space. It's been a, um, a great uh, solution for ATMs, particularly remote ATMs. However, we are also a fully um, provide across the board dedicated uh, internet access circuits. Uh, those are circuits that um, provide better speeds and a dedicated connection broadband, MPLS, and so kind of what I want you to walk away from today is that while cellular is a primary point that we'll discuss, it's really that we also can provide those other ones because you'll always find that, you know, if you have 15, 20, 100 locations, there's always going to be that one, two, or three that cellular just may not work for or they may need more uh, bandwidth and don't want to pay for the, 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 the amount of data that they're using for cellular, and so there's always that opportunity is for to blend the different carriers together. Um, Ventus also offers for this two types of solutions. We have a fully private network, which is the backbone of our financial services offering. It is a dual data center with full or redundant connectivity within those data centers. It's a PCI 3.2.1 compliant network. And the sort of secret sauce in it is it has the ability to do multiple point routing. So that uh, machine that you have that may need to go to the processor, may need to go to check imaging, may have to have um, ATM management going back to your locations, all those types of things can be customized into that solution that's built for your customers or for your bundle. Uh, we also have um, for retail machines and for non-ATM activity, uh, stuff that doesn't need that 3.2.1 sort of uh, level of PCI compliance. We have direct uh, internet access, uh, Ventus Internet Gateway access, and that's uh, and we'll go into a little more detail on the difference on those later. Um, each person that comes in with their sales rep, they'll um, look at a network solution, and then that network solution gets certified. And we, uh, the, the one of the ways that we provide great service for our customers is once that that solution is certified. It's um, a Visio is created, it's hosted on a database, and then if there are issues and there are calls or there are questions or additional orders, that solution is already recorded and everyone involved in um, working on and monitoring and maintaining that network um, has access to that and knows what they will be working on. Um, all of our hardware goes out pre-configured, so it's plug and play, You, um, it's received, you can place it into the products that you're deploying it with. Uh, it connects to the internet and is set up and then um, it, it's all ready to go. So you don't have to worry about keeping up with that and going through it. Um, we do have a 24 seven 365 technical support center and they are there for uh, any support that's needed as well as um, we have custom alerts. So depending on what's important to you, you can go through the list of uh, things that are tracked. It could be data usage, it could be power alerts, it could be uptime and things of that nature. Those are all sort of customizable. And um, when they hit the thresholds that are set, those are then proactively sent out to you to make you aware of things that are going on. So that technical support group that I discussed, um, that group is uh, fully staffed 24-7, 365. They're, um, they have a couple primary where you first would interact with them would be in the setup for those deployments. Uh, you can use them as a support group to uh, connect. And once those deployments go out, can verify the location for that product and put that in there. They're there for troubleshooting. If there's issues or questions, they become the single contact 
for the carriers. So instead of you having to, if you've got Verizon and T-Mobile and AT&T or Cox or Comcast or any of the different providers that may be out there, instead of you having to worry about and getting on there, what we do for a living is networking. And so our teams are well-versed in what needs to be done, what needs to be looked at, uh, ensuring that it is a network issue. Um, they're not, and we treat it differently than what you might get uh, with an entry level or support group that you're calling the carrier, they may just ping the signal and say, hey, it seems to be working. What they're looking at is that design, they're looking at the connectivity, they're looking at the hardware, and they're providing a full sort of uh, one-stop shop for looking through that. And our goal is always for that one call resolution, making sure that when you do call in, that you have the ability to get your questions answered and get uh, what you need and, and that we'll take care of that and not set that up. That will help you with tickets and process that uh, through that day. And so the other important element of that is that Ventus uh, over the last 15 years has developed an uh, online monitoring platform called Genesis. And within Genesis, uh, you can use it as little or as much as you want. Uh, we have some customers because we are offering a fully managed service that they um, have never opened Genesis and don't use it. We have other customers that use it constantly and provide reports and are able to look at stuff and check up time and things like that. And so Genesis is an important part of that process. And what we've recently added is that we now have a mobile phone application and that phone application can assist in um, setting up and um, putting out new deployments and working with customers to provide them with a way to access it from their phone and not have to be on their things. So this is really helpful for uh, companies that have their own installation teams or do their own sort of field services and things like that. The Ventus hardware, um, we not only use our Ventus technology hardware, we also use any third party hardware that's available. So, um, you know, we're not restricted to just Ventus equipment, but we have some very uh, well supported enterprise level equipment that is designed specifically for the types of solutions that we offer. And um, those are brought together through our main product, which is the V2000X4. That is a four port router that provides um, a very simple solution for inputting you know, into the ATM. It comes with uh, uh, earth magnets on the part to place it in there. It has the ability for that solution that we would work with you ahead of time. It's pre-configured and put into that router and, and placed on there. We have uh, the kit for the X4 comes with its own antenna and power supply within it. And that antenna is a dual band antenna that uh, we believe uh, gives us one of the best um, si uh, one of the best signal uh, for the cellular connectivity. Some of the other stuff that goes on with our hardware, the way it's managed is that uh, we provide all the licensing and software for those types of things. So there's no need for you to worry about having to upgrade your routers, maintain the licenses for them. Those are all part of your um, management process in working with us and we handle those things. Something unique to the Ventus equipment is the power alert. So we have embedded batteries within the, the uh, router. It's not there to run a product. It's there to identify if there is an issue with that device and determine whether it's a, pro a power alert or a network alert. Um, our new product that's coming out is the VRB842. Um, you can reach out to us afterwards and we're happy to, to uh, get you um, some of these units to look at. The VRB is a very unique product is that it's a combination of a reboot as well as a router. And so you have the ability to remotely power reboot two independent devices. So if you have a camera plugged into it or an ATM plugged into it, an alarm or anything else, and you have something that has operational issues um, within that it needs to just be completely power cycled, you have the access to do that through Genesis and reboot those products. The third product is our VXI 300. Uh, this device is a combination antenna, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and um, it, it will allow you to place a internet signal uh, up to 300 feet away from the telco closet or the device that's there. We've seen this um, has worked um, for hard to place locations, uh, stadiums, hospitals, you know, things of that nature, because we can get it out, get it close to a window, get it away from uh, wherever the location is. And it's powered over ethernet, so it's a single uh, element that takes it and moves it over there. Uh, the LC100 
is a compact. Um, it's three inches by two and a half by an inch high. This device we found is a, a great solution for our smaller managed products. So smart safes, cameras, things that digital signs that need a small uh, foot fit and format to kind of fit into those spaces and but still have the the power and the resources to provide a, an outstanding connection for that. Uh, all these products have dual SIMs. So the dual SIM solution that's built into these allows it that starts with its primary connection. And then from its primary connection, uh, if there's an issue, it auto fails over to the secondary connection. And within that uh, process, it stays on that secondary connection until there's an issue with that connection, uh, or it can be manually put back to the primary if, if there's a need to do that. And that's also through Genesis. Um, so the, the solutions that, as you're going through your different elements that you may want to think about, um, our primary emphasis was ITMs, ATMs, um, BTMs, the Bitcoin machines, and TCRs, things of that nature. Um, you know, those are all things that that our solutions work outstanding for. They provide the network connectivity for it. They can provide the routing or security, whether you have an open internet type connection or our Ventus private network connection. Um, you know, and when you go through this list, you know, John will get into a little bit of detail on on some of these and. But as you think about the products that you're managing, that's really the emphasis that we want to kind of address here is that as you go into the market and address financial institutions and provide uh, managed services for those things, you may need to have your own connectivity and consider how you're connecting to that. And so think about um, the opportunity that when you're introducing that product, providing its own connectivity so that you're not reliant on the enterprise's uh, connectivity that you're with. And this way, if there is issues, well, we've seen in the past where, where folks have really kind of, you know, utilized the Ventus connectivity correctly is that they historically were hooked up to their customer's internet. And then when there was issues or connectivity issues, they were relying on the customer's IT department to try and um, troubleshoot that infrastructure. And if they're having issues with their network, if they're having issues with everything else, an outside third party company is probably the last person that they want to kind of discuss that type of thing with. And so we found that we've been able to provide a, a durable, secure, reliable connection um, that can be bundled into your services as you go to market and provide that opportunity for um, you to provide that managed service for your customers. Um, the Manage NOS, uh, just some of the features that come with Manage NOS. Um, I've hit on some of these as we go, um, but this is the differentiation. And so I just want to, as you look at these, kind of think through the difference of we are not um, just selling you an internet connection. We're not just selling you a router. We're not just selling you the combination of the two. We're providing with a full service. So it's it's our responsibility to ensure that um, we work with you and focus on your customers' needs. And so some of those things can be driven by budget, can be driven by location, can be driven by data usage or bandwidth needs. And we look at all that with you to ensure that we develop the correct um, product for you. Uh, I will, the data transport, I'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, within the cellular area, one of the benefits of working with a um, managed service provider such as ourselves is that we would combine the carriers that provide the best fit so we have different types of data plans available. We can do cross carrier, so you can have both uh, any of the three national carriers. We have cross data plan sharing, so we have data groups that share across those plans, and all those things can be, you know, we work with you to figure out what your data usages are, and then come up with the the, the um, cellular elements that kind of fit that the best. Um, as far as the second SIM goes. We are, the way our solution works, because we are looking at it as a um, best effort solution, we're not sort of saying you don't, while both SIMs, one is active and one is um, uh, ready, it is set to go and once it fails over, that data plan just moves over to that SIM um, and maintains that data plan so that the, then there's no secondary data plan required for that SIM that's not uh, active, that's in the ready state. 
the the highlight I mentioned before is sort of the Ventus private network. So I just want to sort of articulate this a little bit. So when you think about the Ventus private network, because of the way that we built our um, data centers and our redundancy and things of that nature is that we take that um, financial institutions um, signal or network and we remove it from just being on the open internet. And so it comes back through our secure VPN tunnels we take in all the traffic that's coming through from that ATM, and it could be anything from managed services to alarm panels, DVRs, check imaging, you know, anything that, that gets put into that box and needs connectivity, it all never, it never goes to the same place. And so we will design the circuits to provide that so that it gets to where it's supposed to go. Some could go to cloud, you know, with all the cloud services these days, some stuff may go back to a data center, some may go to a processor. And so it's, it's always our emphasis to build that out and host that through. And, you know, the security level that we look at, so a simple sort of illustration of that type of design is that the signal leaves the, the ATM, goes through the wireless carrier, and it goes back to both of our data centers. And within those data centers, it is then processed and divided up and sent out to the uh, multiple locations that are going on. And so this illustration of that blue area is how Ventus is providing that um, service back to our customers to ensure that they meet those um, CDE uh, customer um, data issues and making sure that the card the cardholder data is uh, intact and secure. And so this is the you know as we mentioned before this is a PCI 3.2.1 compliant network and we provide that as a service for a lot of our institutions. But not everyone needs that level of service, so we also have our traditional internet gateway. I know it seems uh, simple, um, but it, it's just, we want to make sure that people know the difference is that you can have the the uh, full private network, but we also do traditional um, wireless where you, it comes out of the machine, goes through the wireless provider and goes to the internet and can be directed to the elements that it needs from the internet from there. So, you know, these are the, the solutions that are out there and that's primarily a, like a retail ATM or sort of the non-financial sector ATMs or elements that are in there for that. So uh, from that, I will pass it on to John and he will kind of walk you through some of the specific solutions and just some of the ideas that we've looked at over time and, and things that we address from there. So uh, here's John Campbell. If, uh, John, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and then kind of go through the uh, solutions. Sure. Thanks, Bill. Uh, so my name is John Campbell, uh, Vice President of Business Development Financial Sector. Uh, I spent 17 years in the FI uh, realm uh, deploying ATMs and branch equipment. Uh, we always used to say that everything was plugged in was under my team back in those days. Uh, and then another five years working for Star and First Data before coming to Ventus. So I've been on both sides of the aisle before coming to Ventus. Um, you know, obviously, as Bill mentioned before, uh, Ventus around for about uh, 20 years, uh, and as many folks know, has been known as a leader in connectivity for remote ATMs. Um, you know, if anyone who's been in deployments long enough knows that one of the biggest hassles for remote ATMs or uh, brick and mortar at a branch is getting those hard lines pulled by the major carriers, uh, especially for remote deployments where you can get the kiosks and the buildings all done and then you're still waiting 30, 60 days for that. Uh, with uh, Ventus Solution, we're able to speed up and get more rapid deployments out there, get those machines up online and either servicing customers or earning revenue. And there's less dependence on the IT uh, network support from the end customer. Uh, again, whether it's uh, logistics or bandwidth or just being able to simplify the process being able to re you know, reduce that demand on them, as well as still getting those transactions out to the different multi-points uh, through the private network, as Bill mentioned before. And then, you know, making those installations, those appointments uh, more efficient and streamlined because, you know, we send out those units pre-programmed. You know, we work, as Bill mentioned, you know, between the engineers working out the infrastructure and the routing, as well as working with the installation teams so that those units are delivered out to technicians ready, uh, you know, plug and play. So again, it makes for a more efficient deployment for the remote ATMs uh, and expediting deployments, getting them up on uh, online. Uh, next slide. Got it. Uh, one more back. 
There we go. Hey. Sorry. There you go. Uh, so uh, anyone who's been in this industry long enough has been hearing about branch transformation. I think we've bludgeoned that that term to death the last 15 odd years, uh, dating back to my days at the credit union. Um, I think FIs are still trying to figure out what that truly means. It means something a little bit different for everyone. But of course, uh, ITMs have been creeping up. Uh, of course, the two major ATM manufacturers in the country have been <clears throat> working some flavor of this branch uh, teller uh, ATM hybrid for years. Uh, but of course, um, during COVID and right now, we're hearing more and more financial institutions asking about ITMs. They're talking to their processors, their cores, to us and to many of you about support of ITM technology. Um, one, because it, you know, being able to support branch and ATM transactions for efficiencies, but also now trying to offset the impacts of branches being closed or uh, staff limitations, staff accessibility. Uh, many of the credit unions uh, in Georgia uh, have limited hours, drive through uh, because of uh, COVID precautions. They've shut down the usage of shared branching transactions, which is something that's supported on many ITM units out there. And, uh, you know, ITMs is a way for them to get around this. And then finally, they're using uh, this as a launching point for finally deploying and breaking into uh, the usage of ITMs and that type of technology. Because like ATMs, there's the ability to support multiple process channels to multiple endpoints, uh, and we're able to support that. And then of course, you know, it's always a funny turn into future proofing or trying to prepare yourself for the next evolution. But, you know, Ventus, because of the way that we have our private network set up, the ability to support new endpoints uh, as the FI or you decide to add additional services, um, you know, we leverage our connectivity to all the different processors and third parties, check consolidators, um, all those uh, you know, financial services groups that you, know, you need to connect to, we can connect to from our back end and enable those transactions at the ITMs. Next. So branch ATMs, um, as I mentioned before, so for me and my old experience, having both brick and mortar as well as remote uh, and being the quote PCI guy in quote back in those days, uh, we've seen in the last few years, this growing trend to pull ATMs off of the branch networks. Um, some of it is to uh, relieve uh, the uh, impact of network transactions, uh, but there's the two main that we have seen getting those ATMs off of the branch network and the proprietary network backbone uh, has been one, uh, PCI scope, getting that you know, card data environment out of the scope, out of the realm of the branch network, out of the actual financial institutions network, uh, so it reduces that scope. Yes, PCI is still impacted, but you no longer are uh, you know, directly responsible because it is on the Ventus network, which is the PCI compliant private network that we have. And then also the continuity. <laughs> um, you know, even if the FI's network is down or the branch is having connectivity issues, those ATMs still stay online for service to the customers. Um, you know, reliability of ATMs is always important at retail and at financial institutions, but obviously the financial institutions, it's a benchmark that they use. I used it. All of my continuing colleagues use it uptime at the ATMs and not impacting cardholder, whether it's member, or customer, or whatever, it's a bank or financial institution. You know, keeping those machines up and running, uh, not only because they're on uh, Ventus's network, but also the dual SIM that Bill mentioned earlier. Uh, and then once it kicks over, there's not a bouncing back and forth. If you've been in this long enough and you've dealt with old connectivity, remember the days of ATMs bouncing around, it throws settlement out, it impacts customer reliability. But you'd be able to you know, reduce those outages that have impacted any branch connectivity. And uh, again, it makes it a more reliable experience for your end customer and their card holders uh, out there. And of course, the branch isolation is something that, again, with uh, all the security threats that are out there, it's something that you know, it, it helps the FI show that they are adding another layer of security to what they're doing at their ATMs. Next. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of case studies here, nothing uh, you know, too heavy or detailed, but uh, another area that we're seeing a lot of movement on is smart safes, uh, both uh, in usage with FIs and retail. 
Um, and with this growing trend of the managed services, managed operations, outsourcing, uh, many of these financial institutions and retailers no longer wanting to be in the business of trying to maintain these units. So they're looking to folks like yourselves and others in the industry to you know, manage those devices. Well, in order to manage them and manage them efficiently, they've got to be able to remotely connect to them. One of the biggest issues they have is trying to connect to them through the existing network that it may be um, controlled by or integrated into. So using, uh, you know, Ventus connectivity with a cellular router, you know, it, it allows, you know, unlimited access for you to be able to remote into those units, manage them, update them, check on their health status. Um, and it, again, it, it streamlines the ability for you to be able to integrate yourself into their process without having to work through their existing network. Next. Uh, BTMs or the crypto uh, ATM, crypto units, kiosks, whatever flavor of verting you want to use for them. Um, this is uh, increasingly expanding. Uh, several of the uh, crypto ATM, BTM providers out there are accelerating deployments, uh, which is accelerating the need to be able to uh, you know, keep up and adapt to the expansion of these units. Uh, you're pretty much going to find many of them being dropped right next to an existing ATM in many locations. Uh, a lot of these units take only cash, uh, so those two units will be used in unison and actually increase the usage of the ATM. Of course, how many ports, how many hard lines are there that are available, that becomes a problem getting a new line pulled. Uh, being able to go and use the Ventus solution to help with those deployments uh, increases the ability to be able to actually go and deploy a location set you want to be able to again we'll still use a unit with a dedicated dual sim uh, and uh, secure internet gateway but you know this is going to be a growing trend there uh, crypto is becoming more and more uh, accepted in the united states it's not the crypto that we knew six eight ten years ago uh, when it was still in its infantile status and with covid we've seen an increase in growth okay Good. And you know, alarm entry, obviously many of you have got uh, security as a heavy part of your footprint and the services that you provide. Um, obviously, um, you know, announcements from certain carriers recently that DSL is no longer going to be supported um, in, in the future. You know, fixed line has become, you know, again, it's a problem, uh, whether it's location, construction there's always an issue with fixed line at sometimes and a you know, reduced cost of being able to go and deploy a uh, dedicated cellular router in these locations uh, allows for a you know, faster deployment uh, increased uptime uh, and again you know the the cost of what used to be um, the older technology of copper or hard line whatever you want to call it uh, versus being able to use cellular technology uh, will allow you to be a lot more flexible with your customers in the deployment of uh, alarms, alarm panels, and, and alarm monitoring uh, out there in your footprint. Uh, and a lot of the signs you see, a lot, you know, whether it's a doctor's office, it's uh, you know, financial institution branches, retail locations, uh, a lot of the digital signage that was put out was thrown on top of the existing uh, networks that were out on the, uh, in, in the retail space, in the doctor's office, in the building. Uh, and as you go and start adding more services and more units onto that, it becomes more of a problem. Uh, you know, and again, it was, hey, how much bang can we get for our buck and throw it on there? And it starts becoming a problem, whether it's trying to manage those devices or just the reliability of them being up. Uh, so again, having a Venta solution where it's a dedicated router not dependent on the existing networks that's there. It's on the private Wi-Fi. Uh, and it, again, it becomes a real-time access. It's always connected. It's not dependent on if the Wi-Fi, the existing connectivity in the building or the location becomes bogged down or has uh, any sort of breakdown. Once again, with the Ventus solution, that unit will keep on working. Um, we also see this a lot in the financial institutions. Uh, their exterior signage 
uh, instead of going and pumping it through the branch network, uh, especially if they want to be able to say that the branch is closed down, they need to push updates out to that signage, they can do so and it's not dependent on trying to force it through their own network backbone. Next. So really with the, uh, the managed network solutions with Ventus, again, we try to really push for an, an ease of engagement uh, with all of our customers. Bill mentioned that uh, a good 75% of the folks that work for Ventus uh, are engineers, telecommunication experts. Um, we spend a very uh, large amount of our time not just trying to force a solution down a customer's throat, we really try to work with what is the need that you are trying to address and work within the confines of what Ventus provides and then working out solutions uh, to meet your needs. Uh, with the 24-7 uh, customer service, we really try to make sure that we're there for our customers uh, during the initial stages of engagements, during deployment, afterwards, uh, and availability when uh, you are looking at new solutions or your clients down stream are looking to implement new solutions at their branches or uh, retail locations you know what can Ventus support so we try to stay engaged not only with you and financial institutions but also all the different vendors a large part of what i do is also working with a lot of the major manufacturers and other service providers to find out what they're working on so that Ventus is prepared to uh, be able to support those new services as they are made available to the financial institution and retail marketplace out there uh, and again, as you see, you know, our, um, our availability, our installation success rate, and our retention speaks for itself because we stay engaged um, with what's going on in the industry and to be able to support our customers to the fullest uh, ability that we can. Great. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Um, DJ, I noticed no one, we didn't get any questions in the chat box. Do you have any questions that were submitted um, direct through the question portal? Yes, I do. Uh, the first one is are the is about the extra charges for Genesis monitoring and mobile access. Uh, John, you want to take that? Uh, the you know, part of Genesis is um, you know part of what comes with the installation of Ventus services. Um, it's not an extra charge for it. Um, we have a lot of our clients, as Bill mentioned, that use it um, very much to pull reports, daily monitoring, uh, you know, if they've had a unit that's gone and switched over to um, the uh, second SIM uh, because of an outage, uh, push it back to the primary, um, but uh, no extra services and fees for that. Okay, and the next one I have is what happens um in ventus when communication is lost during a credit card transaction john i'll let you take care of that so if you know if there's a if there's a connectivity issue whether it would be ventus or any other network provider if the transaction fails it you know it does not reach its end point it would you know time out uh and you know, not complete um, you know, that would be seen in any settlement platform uh, that there was not a completion of the transaction itself. Um, if for any reason uh, we would see you know, any sort of repeat of that, we would go and look into it and find out what the connection issue may have been, whether it was actually the carrier itself, uh, if there was some sort of outage with it. Uh, but obviously, with uh, whether it's uh, dual message or single message transaction activity, you know, if it does not make, meet its end reaction, it will go in timeout from the point of sale terminal itself. Uh, so there shouldn't be an and there there shouldn't be an issue with settlement. Okay. Um, then I have uh, we stream live security footage based on motion sensors we have at certain sites. Can Ventus handle this type of bandwidth on its units? John, I'll take this one. So within the um, cellular connectivity a lot of folks um, believe that you know that it doesn't have the capacity to handle some of these large uh, bandwidth uh, needs however that cellular these days has the bandwidth as well as the speeds to handle these types of things the question is is that is the amount of uh, video or connectivity going through that going to uh, be detrimental to the amount of data required and so the the system is completely able to handle through both cellular or fixed line However, with fixed line, as we know, it's an all-you-can-eat 
uh, product. So once you pay for it, you can run as much data as you want through it. With cellular, you're paying for the amount of data that's um, being utilized. And so we work with our customers to design those products. And, and that's where we help make that selection. You know, what are the types of things? What's the amount of data? What's the most cost effective way to deliver the needs and the uptime that you're looking for for that product? to ensure that that gets done. And so uh, it's absolutely uh, capable of, of running uh, live video feeds. We run uh, lots of uh, ITMs these days um, and work directly with uh, partners that are running video through those ITMs on cellular. And so we, we always look to um, make the correct solution for what our customers bring to us to provide back to their end users as a bundler. Anything else, BJ? Um, just am I able to monitor my own Ventus units and update information about them remotely? Yes. Uh, so our Genesis platform allows you to um, look at your individual units. Uh, you can put notes on them. You can run reports on them. And it allows you to look at the uh, uptime for those uh, devices remotely. Okay. And my last question is uh, with dual SIM, if the unit fails over to another carrier, will it keep bouncing back and forth if there's an intermittent issue with the primary carrier? It will not. So um, the way that our auto failover product is designed is that um, you begin with your primary carrier in that uh, active mode. And if there's an issue with that carrier, it moves over to the uh, secondary carrier that's in a ready mode and we'll stay on that secondary carrier until um, it is either manually moved back over or um, there's an issue with that secondary carrier. And so we want to avoid that sort of bouncing back and forth. And so over the years, the process that we've established in working with our network engineers is that they believe that that's a better format than trying to fail back to the primary. And so once it fails over to whatever the ready state was, um, it will stay there until there's an issue with that carrier or if there's something that uh, ultimately we see something that's going on. So maybe it was a major outage where a single carrier had all kinds of stuff go down, you know, hundreds or thousands or a whole state or something like that. Then uh, we would be we'd work with our customers to determine uh, is it better to move it back once that uh, issue is resolved. But we do not do the flip flopping back and forth to um, to try and. Um, avoid that exact uh, issue yeah and as i mentioned earlier before that's one of the reasons with settlement because the last thing you want is for the original transaction to go out on one line and a kick over um you know as bill mentioned flip-flopping back and forth in the old days of old connectivity for atms you'd see this and that would lead to a lot of settlement issues and we want to make sure we minimize that Okay, that is the end of the questions that I have. If anybody's got anything else, if you wanna get it in there real quick, I'll give you a second. Um, in the meantime, uh, Bill and John, thank you for a great bit of information, a great webinar. Um, thank you both for the time and effort of putting this together. Um, Excellent, thank, thank you, you for having me. All right. Uh, anyone need to reach out to us, feel free. Uh, here's John's contact information or reach out to BJ. Uh, we're happy to share the deck and provide any follow-up information. Okay, all right. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, thanks for the time you spent with us today. Stay well, take care, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.